Welcome back ladies and gentlemen for another learning Python through Total video. Uh, this will probably be the last of the series, or at least for now, and uh, we'll see how we go. Anyway, so we've been building this tic-tac-toe. Uh, there's a couple of little things that I will quickly mention uh, that I've kind of skipped over so far. Uh, a few extra little commands along the way. So set up and the 600, 600, so that is saying I'll, uh, this will create my screen size. Uh, so I get to manually specify, so I'm saying width of 600 pixels, height of 600 pixels. That creates the screen of the size that I want. Hide turtle makes the little turtle the icon thing disappear, which makes it draw a little bit faster. And then to make it draw even faster still, you can put in the speed of 10. The default speed is six, the slowest is one, 10 is as fast as it goes. So just to give you a comparison from previous videos, this is how fast it draws now. You can see it goes a lot faster. The circles still take a little bit of time to work out because it's because of the angles and the curves involved. But straight lines certainly draw really fast. So we've got our horizontal bars, we have our noughts and crosses that have been drawn and we ha have our pieces set where I can just change the, a value in the list and it will change the value of the piece. So a couple of little things we are going to do today is we're going to add uh, mouse functionality to uh, make this game playable. Uh, and So we will empty the list out, take out all the crosses and the noughts because when the game starts off it is an empty board. So if I run that now we will have an empty board. So we will need to be able to add to this list as we go. Uh, another thing I'm also just going to quickly do just to make things a little easier later on is because every time we click a, a square we're going to need to redraw the board or at least redraw the pieces uh, to draw for the new, whatever new piece we've clicked on. So uh, this piece of code here, I'm going to turn it into a function. So we'll just call that uh, draw pieces. And that can receive uh, the pieces list. Which means all of this now gets indented to go inside that. All right, and so now, if I just want it to draw the pieces, if I put that at the end of my code, that will run the function and head at the pieces list, and then this will go through the pieces list and still draw it, and everything should behave exactly the same. At the moment, there's no pieces to draw, but you get the idea. If I put an X in there. All right, works beautifully. Okay. Get rid of that X. So, how do we listen for uh, mouse clicks? So, the, uh, there's a few, couple of little things that we need. Uh, we use the command on screen click. And then here I need to give it the name of a function. So, I'm just going to call it clicked. And then we also use another command called main loop. And what this tells, uh, so what this line does is when you click on your screen uh, it tells Python to look for a function called clicked and go run it and then this just tells Python to keep looping and keep on running don't quit once uh, uh, even though it looks like you finish all the code uh, so that is what helps uh, tells it to keep running to listen for the mouse clicks otherwise it would just quit once we hit this line so this is telling it to look for a function called clicked and run it so let's give it a function Define clicked, and inside this function receives two parameters, the x and y coordinates of wherever you click. So for instance, you clicked x, y, oops, and that's a comma to join pieces together on a print statement. So if I run this, If we look up here, we'll see, okay, we clicked minus 287, positive 287. Uh, and wherever I click, it gives me the coordinates. So remember, the center of the screen is the zero point. Okay, or y increases as you go down. Sorry, increases as you go up, negative as you go down. Left is negative to the left and positive to the right. So I need a way of now converting these coordinates into 
the square number that I clicked. Uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, remember, computers start counting from 0. So how can I convert this into a number that's 0 to 8? So uh, we have to get a little mathy. So let's figure out the column and the row separately and then figure out how we can combine the two to figure out our actual square number. So the column number is going to be equal to, remember that it, we're running from, from negative 300 to positive 300. So I'm going to just add 300 to it all. To whatever's in x, I'm going to add 300. So that means my x is now running from 0 to 600. All right, and if I divide that by 200, then I'll get a number 0, 1, or 2. All right, 600 divided by 200 is 3. All right, 599 divided by 200 is, uh, is 2.9999 something. Okay. Now what this double slash is saying is do a division, uh, but just give me the number of whole numbers that fit into that division. Okay, so think of it as like primary school division, uh, where, uh, let's see, 11 divided by 5, for instance, uh, it goes twice with one left over. So this would give me the twice. Okay, and then we have another thing called the modulus that would give me the remainder. Uh, but So that gives me 0, 1, or 2. And then let's do the same with the, with the row. So the vertical, uh, uh, so the top of the board, uh, that I need, um, I can, t I know ahead in my mind that I'm going to want the top row to be zero, the middle row to be one, the bottom row to be two. So I really want y to be like from zero, increasing as we go down. Uh, but the top is the 300. Then we have zero in the middle and negative 300. But if I subtract 300 off of y, then I'm running from zero to minus 600. So if I turn that into a negative, then I run from zero to positive 600. Yep, that works. Um, which means I guess I could just make this negative y plus 300. That would do the same thing. And then divide that by 200. And so then my square, if my column is zero, one or two, and my row is zero, one or two, uh, then I just need my my column number plus whatever my row number is times by three, and that should give me my square number. All right. So if you need help with the, some of the math side of things, by all means, please come and speak to me. Okay, because uh, I'm interested in your programming skills, not so much uh, the math side of things. All right, but let's just print this out and see if I am getting the correct square number. All right, so this is square zero, square one, square two, square three, square four, square five, six, seven, and eight. Perfect. Now the only thing here is we've got the decimal, uh, and I actually need this as an integer. So I'm also just going to take whatever's. Uh, I'm going to introduce you to the int command, which basically says strip off the decimals, turn it into an integer. All right, and so now we'll just get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The reason I need an integer is because we use integers to access. All right, we can't have the 2 and a half place inside the list. It needs to be exact, so that needs to be integers. So that's why we have done that. All right, so we've got our square number. Uh, so let's see. Who gets to start our game? Let's let crosses start the game, shall we? So we'll say the next turn, whoever clicks first, they're going to be a cross. So, um, do, 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 what do we do? So, um, basically, so we know, we know we know we've clicked on a thing, and so I want to change this pieces thing for whatever the square number is, uh, and uh, so we just use the square bracket notation. Oops pieces 
square is equal to whatever's in next turn. So this is saying inside our list, which is this thing, get the item number that we have in here, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and set it to whatever is on the right hand side of the equal sign, which is just an x at the moment. If it was an x, then the next turn after that is going to have to be an o. If this contains an o, then the next turn after that is going to have to be an x. So we need an, an if statement in here. So if next turn right, was an x, then we want to set it to be an o else, which means it was an o, we need to set it back to x. Uh, now, there's only just one other thing that we need to do. If I run this light right now, we'll get an error. I'll just quickly show you what the error message looks like. Right. Local variable next turn reference before assignment. Bit of a mouthful. But basically what this is saying is, I'm trying to access uh, pieces, or actually in this case, next turn. Okay, uh, We'll have the same issue for both of them. Uh, before it's been set. In other words, it thinks that this thing doesn't exist. But we know it does over here. Uh, and so what we actually need to do is because this is not inside our function, uh, by default Python only lets us use variables that we create within our function. So I need to tell it, uh, oops, uh, this is a special case, I want, this is outside the function but I want to use it. Same with pieces, that's outside the function but I want to use it. And the way we do that is by, at the start of the function we use the special word global, and you can tell it's a special word because it just went bright orange on us. And that I want next turn and pieces, okay, which exist globally in the whole program. I want to access them within my function. And now this will work. And if I click in the middle, all right, it says square four, eight. Okay, but we're not drawing anything. And that's because we need to call our function to tell it, I want you to redraw my board. All right, so we need to put it inside our function. And we can actually get it out of here because there's no point drawing it at the start because there's no pieces set, they're all empty. So let's run. And if I click in the middle now, we get an X and then an O and then another X and then another O and then another X and then another O, and this is going to end up as a draw. Uh, now you can note, notice there's a bit of a delay, because at the moment the way we've written this draw pieces is it's redrawing every piece every time I do a click. And so uh, it, you, you see how long it takes the circles to draw particularly, so it takes a little while to get to each piece. So we're kind of stuck. And it's not going to be a draw, X is going to win. Uh, we don't have any code in here for detecting when it's a winning match. I wonder if you can work that out for yourself. Uh, the other thing that we don't have in here, okay, so it's, it hasn't stopped because the whole game is filled, and there's nothing here stopping us from taking over another piece. I wonder if you can figure out how we might do that. All right, so the trick is in here you need to see is uh, the pieces list at my particular square you need to check that it's empty before you do uh, replace the contents of it with next whatever's in next term. But I'll leave you to figure that one out. Uh, so that, that's how you can um, use the mouse clicks in your turtle programs. Hope that's been helpful. This is Mr. Borngarten signing off.